Uh, guys, I'd like to take this time to talk a little bit about what I've done up to this point in developing a load for this rifle. Uh, first thing I did is I selected two different projectiles I wanted to develop a load for. Sometimes you might do this with one or multiple. I like to do it with, uh, with multiple just to uh, see which is going to shoot the best and give me the best results for my long range shooting. What I selected was the 140 grain AMAX 6.5 millimeter and the 140 grain Burger VLD target. Uh, both are very good uh, long range bullets. I've had good results with both in the past. The, uh, the Burger obviously has a better ballistic coefficient so uh, pushed at the same velocity the Burger is going to outperform the uh, AMAX at distance in both uh, drop and wind drift. The next thing I did is I decided to find out exactly how long to seat those bullets uh, to find out where they like to shoot the best. So what I did is I found out the exact point and the length where they're actually touching the lands in that rifle, in my rifle. And then from there I made a note of that. I measured five of each to make sure that I got consistent results and uh, it was dead on. From there I seated three rounds touching the lands, three rounds fifteen thousandths off the lands, three rounds thirty thousandths off the lands, three rounds forty-five thousandths off the lands, three rounds sixty thousandths off the lands. That's where I stopped with the AMAX. With the burger what I also did is I seated three rounds ninety thousandths off the lands and three rounds one hundred and twenty thousandths off the lands. From there what I did is I took it out to 100 yards uh, with a known accuracy charge with the 142 grain Sierra Match King and I fired groups of three. Normally you do five um, if you're really testing accuracy but I just wanted to get a snapshot of what they were doing. So I fired groups of three at 100 yards um, starting from the furthest out and working in towards touching the lands and you had some very drastic uh, results so you can see exactly where each bullet likes to shoot the best. Uh, damn near cut itself in half as far as uh, accuracy goes. Now that I knew it, uh, what length to seat each bullet for the best accuracy uh, for that specific charge weight, what I'm going to do now is do a ladder test. And by ladder test, what I mean is I'm going to try different charge weights to see what shoots the best at distance downrange. Now, there's a lot to a ladder test. I'm going to do my best to explain how to do it and uh, why we do it. And hopefully you get that. I'll be happy to answer any questions in the comments section. All right, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about why you would actually want to do a ladder test and a couple of things that are going on um, in that rifle when that rifle goes off. So when you fire a round uh, and it detonates inside the chamber, you have a harmonic wave which travels down the barrel to the crown at the speed of sound. Now as it hits the crown, that wave has nowhere to go, so then it travels back to where it originated from in the front of the chamber. Now as that wave is traveling down the barrel, it's opening up the bore. Just a little bit, couldn't tell you exactly how much it is, a thousandth, maybe two thousandths of an inch, probably more like a thousandth or a half a thousandth as it's traveling down there. So in theory, if you have a bullet, a projectile that exits the crown or exits the muzzle, while that bore is opened up ever so slightly, the accuracy would, would suffer as a result. Also another thing that's going on when that round detonates is your, that pressure wave or that wave, harmonic wave, is causing the barrel to whip. But if you look that up, you can find videos where it really shows the barrel whipping. And as a result, you'll have rounds that will impact high, rounds that will impact low. So what we're trying to do is to find a specific node. So when the bullet exits the barrel, it's going to exit when that bore is as tight as possible. And it's going to exit the barrel while that muzzle is moving the least amount possible. And the way we're going to go about doing that is we started off with 41 grains of uh, Hodgkin 4350. Now the reason why I started there is because with the 142 grain Sierra Match King out of this rifle it's pushing those at 2,742 feet per second on average. That's my uh, medium velocity with a standard deviation of 6 which is really really good. Now that's the velocity range I want to stay in. I don't want to be any lower than that and uh, possibly up to about 2,800 to 2,850 uh, before I would start seeing pressure signs. Uh, the maximum pressure load in this rifle is 43 and a half grains of 4350 where I start to see a little bit of pressure. So I want to stay below that so when I'm shooting in the summer on a hot day 
I'm not going to have any issues. Alright, so now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I'm actually going to shoot this test. Now the way I'm going to shoot this test is I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire a three or a five round group, depending on how I'm feeling, now probably a five round group, at 300 yards and uh, make sure that I'm dead on. Now I'm going to actually walk down range, check the target, make sure I'm right where I need to be and I'll walk right back up 300 yards. No time it'll take me to walk down there and back, taking my time, that'll be plenty of time for the barrel to cool to begin the test. Now the way that I'm actually going to shoot this test to make everything even out and uh, make sure you're not having any heat soak issues or anything like that is I'm going to fire from lowest to highest. So I'm going to start shooting 41, 41 and a half, 42, 42 and a half, and then the 43 grains. Then I'm going to let the barrel cool for as long as it takes. It doesn't have to be cold to the touch. If it's a warm day, it's not going to be cold to the touch, but uh, probably at least 5 to 10 minutes. Make sure it's just the barrel feels warm, like it, almost like it felt when you uh, started the test. Now once the barrels cool off, then I'm going to shoot in reverse order in a round robin style. So I'm going to start from highest. So I'm going to shoot from 43 grains, 42 and a half grains, 42 grains, 41 and a half grains, down to 41 grains. And then I'll let the barrel cool again. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'll fire the third round. So I'll shoot from lowest back to highest, from 41 up to 43 grains. And then from there I'll go down and I'll check the results of the test. And then we'll see what happens. I think uh, pretty optimistic we'll have good results with uh, both of these bullets.